Hello, welcome to Edupedia World V. One of the oldest world empires of ancient Mesopotamia was the Akkadian Empire, ruled by Sargon the Great. Many other conquerors were replacing each other afterwards. One of them was the famous Amorite king Hammurabi, who conquered all Mesopotamian city-states and formed the old Babylonian kingdom. He proclaimed his even more famous laws, known today as the Code of Hammurabi. However, the Babylonian kingdom had the same destiny as the Akkadian Empire. During the reign of Hammurabi's successors, the kingdom fell apart. Their place was taken by another powerful ancient tribe, called Hattites. These Hattites were known as one of the most warlike tribes during the ancient ages. Sometimes they are considered to be the first nation that used horses for war, chariots and weapons made of iron. They were superior in warfare than other tribes and formed a vast empire in the place of Babylonian kingdom, though their empire stretched through large parts of Asia Minor as well. They even waged war against Egyptians, who lived further on south. The most famous battle between Egyptians and these Hittites was the Battle of Kadesh in the 13th century BC. Egyptian historians recorded that they had won in this battle, while Hittite historians recorded their own victory, which probably means the result of the battle was a draw. The leader of the Egyptians at those times was the famous Ramses II. Concerning Hittites, it is interesting to note that one of the oldest mentions of Hittites is found in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Most of the 19th century historians did not believe the Bible report on Hittites, and even claimed that no Hittites ever existed as a nation. They thought the ancient historians made up a story about fictitious, supposedly non-existing people. Afterwards, the Hittites retreated to their homeland in Asia Minor, leaving the Mesopotamian city-states to be free again. But only for a short time, because yet another ancient people eventually conquered the territories of the former Sumerian civilization. Those were the Assyrians. Assyrians were even more aggressive and warlike tribe than the Hittites. They were famous for their cruelty and are sometimes considered to have been the first nation that used complex war machines in order to easily conquer the ancient fortified cities and take away their possessions. The greatest extent of the Assyrian Empire was reached in much later period, in the 8th century BC. Some of the most known Assyrian rulers of those times were Tiglat Pileser III, Shalmanassar V, Sargon II, Sennacherib, Esarhaddon, and Ashurbanipal. For now, you could only remember the last one, Ashurbanipal, famous for the so-called library of Ashurbanipal, in which archaeologists found numerous preserved ancient documents written on clay tablets, such as the Sumerian Epic of Gilgamesh. Akkadian, Babylonian, Hittite and Assyrian kingdoms, all of them were replacing each other and were competing to become the next world empire. We may note two important things here. First, there is a rule that every time Mesopotamian city-states were fighting among each other, some other nation usually appeared in their lands and conquered them all. In another words, when two tribes were quarreling and could not get along, other warlike tribe would always enslave them both. If they had stayed together and united, none of the aggressors could have defeated them meaning when people live in harmony and unity, no enemies can defeat them, no matter how powerful and warlike they are. It is an unchangeable pattern throughout all of human past. History tells us that less powerful and outnumbered people, if they were united, would often defeat much stronger 
and numerous enemies. This is a very important lesson to remember. And the second thing is that in every historic period, in every single century, there was some nation or group of people who were trying to conquer the whole known world from various reasons. Of course, beside these ancient enumerated kingdoms of Mesopotamia, there were many other kingdoms in other places, as numerous different nations were already existent and had dispersed all over the earth, forming their own advanced civilizations. However, there was always one among them that dominated over the others and that was trying to become a world empire. Yet another pattern repeated throughout all of human history. Certainly, one of the most famous kingdoms outside of Mesopotamia was the ancient Egypt. The original and domestic name of Egypt is Misr, or Masr. It is thought that this name comes from the ancestor and progenitor of all the ancient Egyptians, who was called Mitzrayim. He is sometimes considered to have been the very first ruler of Egypt. Egyptian rulers were called pharaohs. As in other ancient kingdoms, they had absolute power over the whole country, and were even regarded in those times as gods, or sons of gods. We will say more about this, about the ruling system, society, mythology and religion of Egypt and other earliest civilizations a bit later, at the end of the lectures about ancient kingdoms. First of all, it is important to emphasize that there are many different periodizations of ancient Egyptian history, which do not always concur among each other, especially not concerning the most distant Egyptian past. Although Egyptian chronology of events in their past, recorded by ancient Egyptian historians, is not reliable enough, most of the modern historians use this ancient Egyptian chronology for creating chronology of the whole world history. Or simply put, we generally use dates of historical events based on old Egyptian dating system, but adapted to our modern Christian era calendar. That is why there are many different or unreliable dates for events from ancient Egyptian history and world history in general. And that is the reason why we have not been showing too many dates for the most distant past of human history. We will present only some of the more reliable dates of certain historical events important for you to remember. According to standard periodization, history of ancient Egypt is divided into three time periods. Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom and New Kingdom period. Old Kingdom period stands for the oldest period of known Egyptian history, approximately starting at 2300 BC, that is around 4300 years ago. One of the most known Egyptian pharaohs of those early times was the pharaoh Djoser, famous for building the first Egyptian pyramid, the Step Pyramid of Djoser. Actually, according to ancient Egyptian writings, the real architect of the first pyramid was a very educated and revered man called Imhotep. The first pyramid was used for storing food reserves, such as grains, but in later times pyramids were used as tombs for Egyptian pharaohs. Scientists still debate how it was possible for Egyptians to have built such an enormous object of truly wondrous architectural design as some of the stone blocks used for building the pyramid were a few dozen tons in weight. Many pyramids were built during the Old Kingdom period, among which was the famous pyramid of Giza, or the Pharaoh Cheops pyramid. During the Middle Kingdom period, the so-called Theban dynasty ruled Egypt, as they moved their capital from the city of Memphis to Thebes. They conquered adjacent lands of other nations and especially waged wars against the southern Nubian kingdom. However, around 15th century BC, a people from east came to Egypt, defeated the Theban dynasty and became new rulers of Egypt, 
and that people are known as Hyksos. It is interesting that the most renowned ancient Egyptian historian, Maneto, recorded that these Hyksos conquered Egypt without a single battle. How was that possible? Modern historians too do not know how it could be possible, since the Egyptian army was quite powerful and the Egyptians would certainly offer resistance to foreign warlike tribes like Hyksos. Who were these mysterious Hyksos? They were an ancient Semitic tribe living in northwest Arabia, near Sinai in Egypt, and were known under various names during the ancient period. People from the north of Egypt and Arabia, that is from Syria and Phoenicia, usually called them Arabians and Amalekites. The last one is their original historical name. They had ruled over Egypt for a long time, perhaps even a few hundred years. Egyptian historian Maneto recorded that a certain Egyptian pharaoh from the Theban dynasty eventually defeated Hyksos, banished them from Egypt and liberated all Egyptian territories. Modern historians mark that event as the starting point of the so-called New Kingdom period. During that period, Egypt expanded to more remote territories, creating a boundary with the Hittite Empire in the north in the region of modern Syria. The Egyptian pharaoh who fought against Hittites and one of the most famous rulers of those times was Ramses II. Beside Hittites, Egyptians fought against other surrounding nations as well, mostly with their southern neighbors Nubians or Ethiopians and Libyans. At the end of the New Kingdom period, another wave of different foreign aggressors were attacking Egyptian empire. Modern historians call them the Sea People, as their identity is not fully known. And finally, in 8th century BC, Egyptians lost their freedom again and were conquered by the already mentioned Assyrians. Beside Egypt, Assyrians conquered many other ancient kingdoms and formed a world empire in the 8th century BC as mentioned before. They also conquered the territory of Syrians, Phoenicians, Hebrews and Hittites. Assyrians were those who destroyed once powerful Hittite empire. They practically ruled the whole known world. Though Syrians they conquered have a similar name, they are a different nation and their original name was Arameans. Language of the modern day Syrians is still called Aramean. The so-called Phoenicians they conquered also had a different original name. They were called Phoenicians only by ancient Greeks. That name was probably derived from a Greek word poems, which means red. Therefore, the name Phoenicians could mean the red people. Why would Greeks call them that way? There are many theories about the origin of that name. However, it is quite possible that the Greek name Phoenicians was only a translated term of their original name, which could have been Edomites. Edomites were a Semitic tribe, while Phoenicians are also considered to have been a Semitic nation. And the name Edomites also mean the red people in ancient Edomite language. They were named so after their ancestor who was called Edom, or the Red One in translation. On the other hand, the name Phoenicians was probably used by ancient Greeks even for other nations that lived near Phoenicians, such as the ancient Canaanites. Those Phoenicians were famous for their trading and seafaring abilities. They founded colonies all over the Medi Mediterranean coast, from Greece and North Africa to Italy and Spain. They are also considered to have been the inventors of modern writing systems that is the inventors, or at least transferers, of the phonetic writing, or alphabet. Ancient historian Eupolemus, among others, wrote that Phoenicians were the transferers of the alphabet to other nations, like Greeks and Romans. But he also wrote that the true inventors of the alphabet were not Phoenicians, but Hebrews who lived in their vicinity. After all, Hebrews and Phoenicians were akin to each other and belonged to the same group of Semitic people. 
the names of alphabet letters have meaning only in Hebrew or Phoenician language. For example, the first letter is Aleph or Alpha, which means ox or to learn in Hebrew and Phoenician language, while the second letter, Bet or Beta, means house. Names, forms and meaning of all alphabet letters probably originate from the language and history of Hebrews, though most of historians today believe that alphabet or phonetic writing system was created only by simplification of the earlier pictographic and cuneiform writing systems. Concerning the Hebrew nation, according to their own ancient writings, they are all descendants of a man called Abraham, who lived almost 4,000 years ago. They say Abraham had a son Isaac, and Isaac had a son Jacob. Jacob's other name was Israel, after which Hebrews are called Israelites. Jacob had twelve sons, after whom twelve tribes of Israel were named. These tribes constitute the modern Hebrew nation. At one point of time, the descendants of Jacob, son of Isaac, were enslaved by the Egyptians and were forced to work as slaves in North Egypt. However, one of Jacob's descendants, who became an Egyptian prince, defeated the Egyptian pharaoh's army, liberated Hebrews from slavery and led them back from Egypt to their so-called promised land during the 15th century BC. His name was Moses. This historical event is known as the Exodus of Hebrews from Egypt. By the way, the earlier mentioned historian Eupolemus considered Moses to be the real inventor of alphabet. The most famous king of Israel was King David and his son Solomon the Wise who ruled during the 11th and 10th century BC. After King Solomon, rebellions emerged and the kingdom was divided into two parts, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. The northern Hebrew tribes waged many wars against their southern brothers from Judah during the period of three centuries. And again, while they were fighting among each other, some other hostile nations emerged around them and eventually conquered them both. Assyrian kings conquered the northern kingdom of Israel at the end of 8th century BC, together with Egyptian, Hittite and other empires nearby. In return, the Assyrians were finally conquered by Babylonians, who destroyed their capital Nineveh and replaced them as the new rulers of the old world. The Babylonian kings also conquered the southern kingdom of Judah at that time, at the beginning of the 6th century BC. The most famous and most important Babylonian ruler was King Nebuchadnezzar II. He established the new Babylonian kingdom at its greatest extent. His wife was equally famous, Queen Semiramis, for whom he built the Hanging Gardens of Babylon one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. However, as in case of other warlike and world-conquering ancient nations, like Hittites or Assyrians before them, so the Babylonians were eventually conquered too by other warlike nations. In this case, it was the Persians who destroyed the Babylonian kingdom. Persians are ancestors of the modern-day Iranians, they lived in Iran since most ancient times. At the end of the 7th century BC, Persians defeated Babylonians and neighboring nations that ruled of their territories and formed the great Persian Empire. Persian King Cyrus initiated the conquest of the world, while his successors, Cambyses, Darius and Xerxes, continued his conquest and eventually seized territories of all the nations previously under the rule of Babylonians and Assyrians. It was the Third World Empire. What do you think? What ultimately happened with the Persian World Empire? Though Persians were not as cruel as ancient conquering nations before them, they experienced almost the exact same destiny as their predecessors, 
and were conquered by another nation, the Macedonians and Greeks, who came all the way from Europe. Ancient Greeks founded their civilization far away from the homeland of all nations, Mesopotamia. They came to Balkan area in southeast Europe at the end of the third millennium BC and founded many city-states similar to Mesopotamian city-states. They have written history dates back to 7th century BC, so not much is known about their history before these dates, at least not with much certainty. Moreover, the time period of ancient Greek history from 12th to 8th century BC is not clear at all due to historical evidence deficiency. That is why modern historians name this period Dark Ages. However, before ancient Greeks came to their new homeland, there was another, older civilization already emerging in some parts of modern-day Greece. It was the so-called Minoan civilization, which flourished on the Greek island of Crete. Minoan is not its original name, but was named so by modern historians after the name of a mythological king of Crete, called Minos. According to a Greek legend, this king Minos was married to a princess Europa, after whom the whole continent was supposedly named Europe. It is interesting to note, though, that the legend says Princess Europa came to Crete from Asia, that is, from Phoenicia, which may tell us something about the origin of the ancient Cretans. Minoan civilization was known for its seafaring, trading with Egypt and other ancient kingdoms, and its grandiose architecture. Archaeologists found many remains of Minoan palaces, temples, and other objects in Crete, such as the so-called Palace of Minos in Knossos, which was the capital of Minoan civilization. Beside ancient building remains, 19th century archaeologists also found preserved artifacts and clay tablets with inscribed pictographic and syllabic signs of the ancient Cretan script. Actually, there were three different scripts, the pictographic or hieroglyphic, the syllabic linear A and the syllabic linear B script. The so-called linear A script is not yet deciphered, while linear B script is deciphered and was used by ancient Greeks. Linear A signs meaning is not known because historians do not know which language Minoan spoke, that is, their ethnic identity is still unknown. The only thing we do know is that they were not Greeks and did not speak any language akin to ancient Greek. It is thought that Minoan civilization was conquered by the invading Greek tribes from the north. We will talk more about the ancient Greek history in later lectures. Now we will only briefly mention some other civilizations that flourished during this ancient age. Let's move from Europe to East Asia and see what was going on in China and India. The ancestors of Chinese people came to China from west, from their first homeland, Sumer or Mesopotamia, as all other nations of the world did. They founded the ancient Chinese civilization in the Yangtze and Yellow River valleys, at almost the same time as other ancient historical civilizations were founded around 2400 BC. It was a very advanced civilization since its beginnings. Chinese were especially known for their inventions, which were introduced into Europe in much later period. Some of the most known Chinese inventions were paper and printing. Their writing system, the pictographic script, was invented in the most ancient ages and was not in any way related to other pictographic scripts, either Mesopotamian or Egyptian. Their palaces, temples and the cities were also for admiration. And let's not forget the world-famous Chinese Wall, which was being built over centuries for protection from the Mongols and other northern invading tribes. There were many dynasties that ruled China, though some of them ruled at the same time over different areas. The longest ruling dynasty was Zhou dynasty, and the first Chinese emperor 
who united all Chinese territories, was Qin Shi Huang. He was a member of the Qin dynasty and ruled during the 3rd century BC. Beside Chinese, Mesopotamian and Egyptian civilizations, a group of early people from Mesopotamia inhabited the Indus River Valley as well and founded there one of the greatest and most ancient civilizations, the so-called Indus Valley Civilization, that is India. The original domestic name for India is Bharat, which comes after their mythological ancestor, King Bharata. It was also a very advanced civilization since its beginnings, and was no different from any other ancient civilization. India is especially known as the cradle of Hinduism and Buddhism religion systems, which later spread to China and the rest of the world. We will talk about India in more details in our next lecture. For the end of this lecture, we will say a few more words about the society, religion and mythology of ancient civilization. With a few exceptions, all ancient kingdoms were ruled by a monarch with absolute power. He was even considered to be a son of God or a God himself. The ruling class was composed of a king, high priests and nobility. The king ruled over common people while the lowest class was comprised of slaves. We should not wonder why there was slavery during ancient times, though it may seem at first that this system of government differs very much from the modern systems, the truth is it's quite similar to them, with slight alterations. Unfortunately, facts and statistics tell us that slavery and human trafficking is one of the most profitable businesses of the modern world. Concerning religion and mythology of ancient people we have already discussed in general terms, they were almost identical in every civilization with the main difference being the names of the so-called gods and other divinities they worship. Of course, this mainly refers to polytheistic religion systems. We will now enlist some of the most known gods and heroes revered among different ancient peoples, though you do not have to remember them all. Here you can see the names of different Sumerian and Babylonian divinities, with their supreme god shown on top. These are names of some of the Hittite and Assyrian divinities. Then the names of ancient Egyptian divinities, most famous being their sun god Ra or Amon Ra. It is interesting to note that the name Ra in some Semitic languages means evil, while Amon Ra means much evil. And here are some of the Phoenician and Chinese divinities' names. Other ancient people's mythologies will be properly discussed in separate lectures about them. The most relevant thing to remember regarding this subject is that these divinities, gods, heroes and other mythological beings and stories about them, myths and legends, mostly represent just a vague memory about historical events and real people from the most distant past. Memories that became corrupted due to long-lasting oral transmission from generation to generation. Thank you for watching Edupedia World Video.